So this is the first time ever someone wrote to me in the mail and said, could we publish your poems? <laughs> well, actually, the guy at Bellowing Art did too, but when I sent him the rest of the poems he required, he said, no, they're too sad. <laughs> so this is the book we're celebrating tonight. Most of the books of uh, poems will be from here. Um, called The Journey of Lost Things, and they allowed me to do the cover. So it's my um, picture. And um, there is a beautiful, overly appreciative um, summation of this book on the back, written for a friend of mine called Gail County, who used to come here to Waverly Writers, but the bitch moved to Washington State. <laughs> First poem I'll read is called 18. It's from Journey. And keep in mind that it was the time of the Vietnam War, just beginning. It's called 18. 18, she came to him on a train. Her mother wept, feeling the miles and the city. A soldier got up and offered his seat in aqua dotted Swiss and wrist white gloves. She swept down like sea foam. He returned when her partner left at the first stop. This burnished apple of a boy, brass spinning down his chest. He gave her the window to see the landscape and the whooshing by all those lives. Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, silver with dinner, zigzagging candles, and white Cloroxed cloths. How empty the whole world was. Trains stretching slow into mail stop towns, those clapboard clusters, center steepled places where everyone was happy. Their talk was nothing. They were shining ticket stubs and polished shoes toward a great city, talking of nothing, music perhaps. She asked if he read. No. They slept some, and she would not feel the peeling back of her damp hair so he could watch her face, for she was going to see the man whom she'd known six months but hadn't seen in three, the one she would marry. She would not feel his shoulder heat nor see the wet blush of the boy nor his thick, straight hair, caramel and gold, brocrine to gleaming in the yellow train light. He touched her arm once, pointing to the mauve smog of Gary, and his fingers would not leave her. In Chicago, they shook a gloved goodbye, and she turned clean on her snappy white heels into the marble cathedral of Union Station toward the man who came not quite knowing her down the great stone steps. <clears throat> Living Black. Sometimes I forget and walk down the street jingling my keys, cheerful-like. And certainly when I spy those geese, middle of October, pointed like a giant arrow, why, it takes a breath right out of me. So that's another time I don't think even for a minute that I'm not just a regular person. Red blood shushing through my veins, just regular. You know the feeling, 
watching the hummingbirds at the feeder I just put out in the morning sun. I hold my breath like everyone. Inside, I don't feel anything different than any other body. But I did feel better when my sister was alive. And we would take those after dinner walks for blocks and blocks. We talk so fast and so full of fire about our jobs and what the hell our grown up kids were getting up to now. That darkness fell on us like a landslide. Sometimes a mile from home, we hooked elbows and went on in sweet silence. Now alone, I don't walk in the evening. I make sure I get my groceries in the morning when the air feels to have a calm in it. But as the day wears on, something gets jumbly inside me and in the air around me. I jump as the sirens begin. I lock the door with the thick lock Joe, my neighbor, got for me. And that's when I feel it. Right here, I feel black. My skin jumps right out at me. When I rub my arms, I expect to feel black skin, but I don't feel anything but skin. And I have touched other colors, believe me, and they don't feel different to me, but I think they should. This skin seems to have words written on it, lifts, right off of me, making a young girl lose her smile or an ordinary man reading them. I can see him thinking, she's easy, even at my age. But the time I felt blackest was the night I had to drive Joe to emergency, his heart again, and that police car following us all the way till I jumped out and got the wheelchair. Then he moved on slow, close as he could get to my car. It was midnight, and I think just from the fear town in here, I turned a shade or two deeper. I never knew. I was anything particular when I was a girl. Jews, the Chinese, the Filipinos, we all put our hands to our hearts for the pledge because we were all Americans. <clears throat> Phil. People might not know uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, who was an actor that I was, um, well, I guess to say, enmeshed, enmeshed with. For the fallen Philip Seymour Hoffman, who left us bereft and alone on February 2nd, 2014. Reptilian or seraphic? Your eyes sparked and I got you blue. You knew all the time that you were stealing. And each instance, I went home with an emptied heart. Ticket stubs like ash in my pockets. You were the one I had to grip both of the armrests for. And because of you, the incomprehensible became a yes so deep, I was afraid to look again. Yes, 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 to the wretchedness we keep from each other. 
yes to the precision of fingers combing through something just above your eye. It could have been so easy, a scorched earth affair, but you were a minor and in so deep we refused to follow. But you chucked up diamonds, demonstrating what the anthracite could hold. Everything I've looked away from, you held me by the hair to see, and I hated you, and I was grateful. I would have kissed each bare patch of your whitened body, and I want to thank you for being here longer, much longer than you could bear. And I want to thank God for my eyes and ears and for being in the right place and time to receive you. And I ask for nothing but a long lake of peace for you and those you loved. Uh, in a sense, I've been away from home since I was 13, uh, more or less. Uh, I went to the convent at 13, married at 19, and um, somehow I was always taking trips back and forth to home. But this is later in my life, the second time we tried to live in Illinois, which didn't work out, which is why I'm here. Turnpike. Past the dense wood with its hidden deer. Past the rollaway farms that fall again into woodland. Past the barriers of conifers that beat back the winds and over the black river. Past the Sandusky mills, a worn out life in a back pocket. Above the oil train, dark and lumbering, alongside the rude trucker with the sign in his window, upstairs his name is God. Sitting on a life in tatters, beaten by its engine, if it doesn't work, keep on doing it. Past the rest stops where cement parking lots only remain and the whispered agonies of those who came and went past the road that leads to Coldwater, Michigan, past, uh, I'm sorry, beneath snow clouds, then open sky, streaking by a 50 foot by 50 foot graveyard in the unholy center of acres of spent fields, the dead flying out in a single shaft of sunlight, instinct, that blind machine, Beating. Past Napanee and its clean, bright cows, and a lost gull dipping in confused circles. Goodbye to a washer on its haunches in the trees, and to prairies, 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 and the sun low, outstretched over Mishawaka and its outlying trailers. Any dreams there were, dust beneath these wheels, ashes in graying hair. And if the army moves on its stomach, then a woman on her dreams. Is this, this what we're brought to? A mouth in a line drawn to the edge. This coming home to a strange city, spotty snow to the left and right, heading straight for darkness and the wide open eye of night. Cars by the side of the road. Um, just quickly to say that there was a house that was on the freeway whenever we came back and forth 
to Pennsylvania, and it seemed as though it was less than 10 feet from the freeway. I'm sure it was more, but it seemed like that. And I, I rode around with this in my mind for 20 years. And finally, I rode houses by the side of the road, and out of it came a four-day, five-day fiesta of riding things by the side of the road, and this is one of them in the book also. Cars by the side of the road, abandoned, like divorce, they've been left to their own devices, empty as cups. They await yellow flags, forest destinations. We fly by, are for the present married, have no heart for the broken down, the useless, the unscrewed plates. Autos from Mexico or Wisconsin, a beetle that went to Woodstock, a rabbit all the way from Miami, stories with their tongues cut out. Empty wallets make early departure a reasonable solution. Cars by the side of the road, feet hitting the pavement, lives moving on down, never look back, never look. Who can remember those Ekis in the trunk, all the cozy eight women, the little deaths? Every car was an answer, then a problem. And the earth won't take them, parts, what they become a second chance with none of the glory. A quartet of views for Marilyn. This is Marilyn Monroe, of course. We we love you, we love you, for everything you make us think we can do. We love you because we believe you will ooze about our bodies, that you will suck the sex from us and leave us to lie on clouds above the fires and the stones. We love you because you will stay young forever and keep us up on our game. Because your mouth is a wormy vortex into which we slip and tire, and your bottom soft melons, and your breasts, oh, bury us. Her. That I am a haunted house. That I am a spoiled river, and that I am a well full of pennies, that I am a beach for foundered things, that I am full to death with dissatisfaction, that my soul wretches, that time is my enemy, that I am nothing but pictures that I am barren, that neither pill nor drink can make me forget, that my wantonness is the way I say help. Afterward, in the end, you were in bed where we had dreamed you would be, but instead of burning, you were cold and growing hard. Your heart, that untouched thing, still innocent of love as an unborn, alone as shoes in a cellar, alone as the motherless at the last moments of life, unknown as a foreign country. We had sailed around for years. The note. 
all the upreaching hands, all the greedy fingers, all the breaths at my neck, all the everything promised, the children who died, the turmoil outside, the engine in my head, the wine just beneath my breastbone, my flesh on its quiet rot, my face on buildings, my body everywhere. And yet what? What? This cavern, my beginning already an ending, my ending what I have perhaps done best. The final poem, uh, unfortunately, is current part of our darkness, which we hope will change. A woman speaks about guns. I will not go quietly this time. I refuse to sit down to reasonable discussion. I will not shake hands alongside whispered promises, nor think clearly and coolly to gain empty respect. I will become a sister to my ancient Greek sisters, to Freud's dismissed patients. Today, I am an hysteric torn open, bleeding for the blood of our children. And yes, as a woman, I am screaming all over the world. For it is my innards that cry for a cessation of this war against our poor, against our black, against our children. I will not pray as I have been instructed. I will not contemplate the endless sorrow of circles, large and small, that surround our young, for they are as dead as the innocent. In a country that allows the loss of one human being every 15 minutes to a bullet, I will scream, as they did in Australia in 1996. I have given my milk and my life that children may live, yet now in the shadow of those insisting, no, demanding that the right of the unborn to live while denying the same to those already born. Thank you.